well, another addition, a few little changes. I've had a, a haircut this week. And all right, before we get started, is that the Tempin Bowling Mob AMG? Yeah, sort of. Fast one. Mercedes Benz Paramount. Remember the days? Remember the days that you used to try and bum a ride, and now you got the flash Mercedes? Yeah, I do. It wasn't that long ago. But now we have got. Um, Does that bring back the days when your mother and father were on the dairy farms, and they they gave up so much to help you, Chris, and get to where you are? For sure. We're not going to cry this time of morning. No, no. <laughs> no, they're um, they're good. Well, I think I'm called an ambassador to North. Uh, to Paramount and Mercedes, and um, they're just great people to be associated with. And, uh, Thank you to Tommy Berry. Exactly, <laughs> Tom Berry, Hugh Bowman's on board. Ush, is it Ushman Kawaja? Usman Kawaja, yeah. Usman Kawaja. Um, Brad Arthur. Oh, the Paramount coach? Yeah. He's an angry man. Um, the, the fella on Channel 9 that does the finance news. Ross Greenwood. Ross Greenwood. Nice fella, Ross. Among others, so here's yeah, a, a good, good deals. Good stable of people. Hello to Ian May up there at Chatsford Toyota. Great man. <laughs> Better Mr. Mr. Muir. Muir Holder. Of course, Johnny Muir on the team. Great team. Matthew on the team. Hard to beat a Mercedes though. <laughs> it depends who's behind the wheel. Quick update. Winks, one week on. Yeah, pre-training still. Um, very straightforward. Work at the start. Um, making sure that she's moving well. Um, obviously she's a six months older from when she last started so yeah you're, you're aware of any little niggles but everything's been good let's get stuck in and chris at uh perth the group one in perth the kingston town you got uh three there this week interesting run too tom melbourne you know he's going to run well again he will um and he's absolutely <coughs> thrived since being there he's... i thought he was applying for a, a surf contract <laughs> he's been down the beach that often he's been to the beach plenty of times and loves it and it's all you can do with a horse like him you can't make it run faster you can't do much else apart from help and be happy and uh, enjoy his racing and, and his work. And his work's been a treat. He galloped very well at the course proper, on the course proper on Tuesday morning. And as you said, he's been to the beach a few times and he's drawn really well. Gate seven, Damien Oliver aboard again. I think there's just so many positives. Um, Damien gave him a perfect ride last start, but he had to go up the fence. This might give us the option to sort of settle midfield and get going when he needs to get going. All our roads can't draw a barrier? Nah, barrier 14 I think on, or 11 or 14, somewhere 14. around there. On Saturday, um, Michael Walker rides great hands, Michael. And I think that's the key with a horse like him. Maybe it's time just to let him slide forward a little bit. We rode him back as per instructions last start, but it just didn't unfold for us. And I think that 1800 metres is a tricky barrier. so. Providing he jumps well, I think we'll just slide forward a little bit. What about life less ordinary? Um, fresh, and I think that might be the key to this horse. Yeah, I think so. His run during Cup Week was very good, as has both of his fresh runs in Australia. He won his first fresh run. The second fresh run, was he should have won. At Ramwick, was it yeah. on a slow speed, was outstanding. So it's about four be weeks was between that, Was that beyond coming through? Uh, it was. No. No? It wasn't. Yeah, uh, it was at Rose Hill. Yeah. What's the day beyond coming through, man? Gerald Ryan's horse won the race. No, it was unlucky too. I think Hawks' horse won the race. But uh, they were both unlucky. Gerald's come out and won a couple. After Is Tom Melbourne the one? Um, well, look, life less ordinary. Can he, now that he's trained specifically for these distances and not aiming towards 2,200 metre races, he could really improve. But Tom, look, Tom's the benchmark. He's the, he's the group one horse. Um, that they're all talking about. <laughs> He's got a cult following. Good yeah, on him. good on him. What about in Brisbane? You've got a couple of races, um, and both are coming off last start wins. Yeah. Monasterio and uh, Carini. Yeah, and they've they've drawn really good jockeys in the in the um, in the, the Origin Series race. We've got Dwayne well, Dunn on one, and Mark Duplessis. Yeah, which was interesting because she's only got fifty two and a half Carini, so. Yeah. We we're wondering what we we're going to get, but I'm very happy with that jockey book. She's drawn a bit wider. Uh, Monastero couldn't have been any more impressive in his first two runs, was last two runs, including a win last start. Um, Carini comes back in distance to 2,000, Monastero stepping up to 2,000. He's drawn perfectly, I think he's the one to beat. What about the other one up Brisbane? Zumbaline has gone up there. Yeah, she's gone up there for a listed race. Um, forget her run last start, she, she drew off the track and had to do a lot of work. She's drawn barrier five. And um, 
I think she'll appreciate that style of racing up there from the good game. The best of the ones in Brisbane and Perth? Um, I'd go Monasterio. Winks update, Group 1 in Perth and the runners in Brisbane. Good luck Mr Waller with those ones. Thank you.